Hello, folks. Welcome to another Facebook Live on this lovely Thursday. What is today? The 14th? Something like that. The 14th of January, 2021, when we're going to get it done. And today, we are very fortunate from the St. Rose office, real estate extraordinaire, Tom Fraley, with one hell of a haircut, I might add. Is, is that the... Uh... Is that the new saying now, 2021, to get it done or something? Well, yeah, my new saying is getting it done in 2021. There you go. That, you, I mean, I do have it copyrighted, but you can use it if you want. It's okay. I'll give you a license. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, Tom, you know, everybody in Nevada knows who you are, but we're also talking to California and Arizona. So tell them a little about yourself, how long you've been doing this, maybe a little about how you started in the business. I think it'll be really good. So uh, I've been doing it for, it'll be 16 years in, I think, March or April this year. Um, I was a police officer for nearly 20 years, uh, wanted to do something different. Uh, love my job, don't get me wrong. I actually love being a police officer, but I knew I could do better for my family doing something different. And somebody mentioned to me real estate. I called in, found out there was a school starting that day. I took vacation at work, went to school for two weeks, passed the test, and about Three months later, because that's how long it was taken back then to get my license in, um, I retired from the police department and started full-time real estate. Awesome. Awesome. Great job. Yeah. And, and my, so now you're just dealing with people in a whole different way. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was, a, I was a hospital negotiator for nine years, and I used to try and talk people out of houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. It's funny, but it's not funny at the same time. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, get out, come out, please, put your hands up. Now it's, let's get you into this place. Can you see yourself living here? Exactly. <laughs> All right, good. Tell us, how did it go at first for you? Like your first couple of years, what did you do? So um, the company that I started with, you know, everybody knows the name John Joseph. John Joseph was our, our, uh, our trainer over there and he got me door knocking. So when I first started, I actually... Vegas was at a peak of the market. It was 2006. Um, we were just right, right in the middle of the, uh, the, the downturn. And I had family that had property in Pahrump. So I started going out to Pahrump and knocking on doors in Pahrump and, and learned very quickly that uh, people in Pahrump appreciated a, a Vegas agent coming all the way to Pahrump. And so of my, in my first year, I think 18 of my sales were in Pahrump. That was in my first eight months. Wow. And, and you had 18 closings your first 12 months? No, actually, I had a, I had 28 my first eight months, and 18 of them were in Prom. The other 10 were here in Vegas. Great. That's a, <clears throat> that is an incredible first year. And you were doing those pro proactive things to get it done, right? I was. I, I, you know, I, I joke all the time, and I tell new agents, I said, everything they tell you to do, go do it. Find which one of them worked well for you, which for me, knocking on doors, talking to people face-to-face, -face, um, worked well for me. And so I just focused on that. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always believed in that. Uh, you know, as I always say, real estate is a full contact sport. You got to be contacting people. And then all of a sudden, you know, it starts to work. And then especially now with our VAC, say VAC 2.0, you put people in there and you put them on auto. I mean, it's like autopilot, especially with our brand and so forth. <laughs> and that's something I wish I had in the beginning because in the beginning, I didn't have anything like that with the company I was with. And so... I would work hard for clients, um, get their business, help them through the process, close the deal, get paid and never talk to them again. Cause I didn't have a, a follow-up system. I didn't have an, I've never had an assistant. So for me, had I had something like that in place back when I started, I would probably be doing more business than I'm doing now. Okay. All right. I totally agree, man. I started, I don't you know, you're on my class this morning. I started with a one through 31 file. <laughs> Remember those? Yes. <laughs> Ah, great. All right. So um, give us a little idea. Like, okay, so how was 2020 for you? I know it started off probably great. And then we had the whole pandemic thing happen. But I think you you finished out with a good year, right? I, I finished off with a good year. And so, you know, and, and this is why I always hesitate in doing these with you, Rick, because I know how hard you work. And I know how hard some of the people in the office work. And uh, mm -hmm. in my year, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, the wave riding agent where I have really good periods of time and then I have my downturns. And so for me, 2020 started off really slow actually. And then the third and fourth quarter when we are supposedly in the middle of the pandemic, um, business took off like it did for a lot of us agents. But uh, I think this is, my, this is probably my top, one of my top three years was 2020. 
Okay, good. And how many uh, closings did you actually have? And if you don't mind sharing, like what exactly you finished at? So I finished, I did just under 12 million in production. And, you know, Arliss had told me before last time I talked to you that I had had, I think she said I was at 47 transactions and I've closed like six since then. So I thought I'd be at around 53, but when I look at the numbers in the MLS, it wasn't 53, it's more like 46 or 47. It wasn't as high as what she thought. So that's where I finished the year at. But that's still an incredible year. That's it. That's awesome. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. You know, you know, and, I'm sorry, good. No, and I was going to say, well, go ahead, explain what you were going to explain and then I'll ask you my next question. So this is something I was thinking about before we did this call today. And, and I thought, um, you know, and, and everybody works differently, but what I, what I like about the job that I have in real estate is that unlike some agents who really do spend four or five, six hours a day prospecting to try and build that business because they are trying to do, you know, 100, 150, 200 deals, which is great if that's your motivation. But I will say that from my standpoint, I think that because I have worked so hard, especially in my first two or three years, because I did work so hard to do that little bit of prospecting, but really to treat my customers the best I could. And as a result, now here I am 16 years later, and you know, Rick, you'll be the first one that I'll admit it to, is that I don't prospect at all. All my business is from referral and past clients. And look, I just had my probably one of my top three years in real estate at a time when supposedly the market should have been down. But what I the analogy I give is, um, you know, I think there are some people out there that are, are really, really good at hunting, for example. And they go out and they hunt, 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 but they don't know how to clean their game, if that makes sense to you. And yeah. so what happens is they lose those clients. They don't get those follow up clients because they focus so hard on, you know, having, you know, 100 listings instead of 25 listings for the year that they didn't give the service that allows that follow up business. So for me, one thing I would tell new agents is give 100 percent, make every one of your clients feel like they're your only client at the time. Don't let ego get in the way and give them that that incredible service. And they be advocates for you to where, yes, if you want to continue to do that hunt, continue to do that prospecting, you might you know produce 100, 150, 200, whatever it is your goal is. But I would just say, don't forget your clients and don't don't leave your clients behind in, in search of the hunt. Does that make sense? No, it does. It does. And, and what a lot of people need to understand is like what Tom is talking about. This is why, I, you know, I know you always feel a little weirder when I ask you, but the, one of the main reasons I ask you is that you don't do it exactly the way anybody tells you, but yourself, which is good. You have your own personality and your own way of doing it. Like, for instance, I know that if someone, one of your clients or customers called you at, you know, 1030 on a Saturday morning because they needed help moving a couch or you're on your way with your truck to help them do that. Your customer service is off the charts. You have an incredible sphere. You'll do anything for them and they'll talk to everybody about you when it comes to real estate. So you do have your own way of prospecting. It's just different, which is great. See, and I, think, I think that's where some people miss it. You know, I mean, I do. I know agents who are amazing listing agents. They can list properties like crazy, but then once they list the property, they kind of give everything over to somebody else or sometimes not to anybody. And then by the time the transaction's done, they're never going to see that client again. And just for me, yes, I'd love to do a hundred deals because, you know, I could buy something new. I don't know. I, I could do something more with it. But the truth is I have, you know, young kids at home, a six year old, and 11 year old at home. I love my time with my family. I coach their sports. I love my lifestyle. And yet I'm still doing that much business. And so what I always tell ladies, even like when I come in there when Jamal's teaching a class, I always encourage people, look, the correct answer is you have time. Right. And for those people who go, oh, God, you know, I could never, you know, get up at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning and run and help a client with something because, you know, I've got to do my my, you know, whatever it is they want to do. Otherwise, the truth is a bird in the hand beats two in the bush. And if you have a client that already likes you and already trusts you and already hired you and they need something being there for them. I, so here's what I did before this, Rick, because I actually I called 10 of my clients, just 10 of my clients from this past year. And I said, hey, just out of curiosity what did you like about working with me? Because I don't normally ask for feedback. I probably should, but I don't. And every one of them, their first answer was, you're always available. And I know people say, oh, no, no, you should shut your phone off from 12 o'clock to four o'clock and leave a message and blah, blah, blah. But the truth is the biggest complaint people have about realtors in the industry is that they can't reach their agent. Second thing they said was they always knew I was honest, that I, I was looking out for them no matter what happened. They knew that I would let a deal die if it was in their best interest before I would fight to keep them in so I could get my paycheck. I was never like that. And at the same time, I asked that negative feedback and they, 
the, the same criticism I got from all of them is all, although I was easy to reach, they could reach me anytime if they had a question or concern, I'm not the best at telling them what's next. So I'm not the best at leading them through the process, which is something that I've seen other agents that have kind of a checklist and such to do. So I was just going to say that, you know, for me, the one of the biggest things I want to work on in 2021 is, is giving that that better anticipation of what the next step is so that my clients don't feel, you know, like they have to wait for me to, for them to call me with a question. Does that make sense? No, it does. Yeah. You, I, I call that the set the expectation conversation where in little bits and pieces, you tell them what's going to happen next, because you know, it's kind of like, think about when you go to the doctor and they're just wheeling you down a hallway, like uh, what you know, they tell you everything that's going to happen when you're there. Thank God. Cause I'd go crazy. <laughs> But back to my point, though, is I do. I think the reason I have been successful and had the business I have is because I do make myself available. I mean, I when I first got in the in my company or in, in real estate, the previous company had a, a home fax line on their signs. I would get home fax text messages at one, two o'clock in the morning from people. You know, Vegas is a twenty four hour town, and I would actually roll over, wake up, grab my phone, call them back at one thirty in the morning. And I, I can't tell you how many clients I got that were just amazed that at that time of night I was calling them. I'm like, well. If this is the time of night you're asking for the information, this is your schedule. And I make myself available to my client's schedules. That's amazing. That's great. Awesome. Well, I love it. Okay, so my favorite question to ask all top producers, and I'm going to ask you that one next and, you know, be descriptive on each one. You know, knowing what you know now, 16 years in, closing, you know, 50 deals, which is amazing. I mean, everybody on this who's watching would love to close 50 deals. That's an incredible amount of deals to close, making what you make and helping out as many people as you help, what would and, be the time? Go ahead. And one more thing I'd add to that, and also working the number of hours I, I do. I mean, yes. I, I, I say it because I want to put everything in perspective, but I truly work on average for probably two hours a day. I mean, you've seen, you read the, the book, Four Hour Work Week. Yeah. I mean, I'm only a little bit over that four hour work week. But, but again, but, I'm, but I still, I mean, I guess if I added the amount of time I answer my phone, I, I probably do more than a couple hours a day. But the, the focus sitting down in front of a computer working on real estate, it's maybe two hours a day. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, you know, and the other thing you said that kind of, I, I can't believe that Steven's already six. I'm still playing that. It was just like yesterday or not too long ago. Anyway. All right. And you have an 11 year old too. She's a cutie. All right. So <laughs> great looking kids. All right. So back to the question. So top three and elaborate, please, if you could, uh, what would be the three pieces of advice you tell them? Okay, if they want to be successful in this business. I would say right away, start your database and don't do the database, which is nothing more than a name and a phone number on your phone, because that's not really a database. A true database is, you know, information like my past clients, my clients in my first, let's just say five years. If they called me right now, I wouldn't know what house they bought. I probably don't have their email address. I probably don't remember who they are. And the truth is that in my database, I should have all that. Like when they when they call me, my phone should open up and say, name and an address, if nothing else, just so to remind me of who they are and where they bought. That again is just a matter of that, that communication with past clients to create that additional business down the road. So my first number one thing that I should have done and I needed to do a long time ago was set up a real database that I maintain, keep track of and keep updated. The second thing I would do, and this is pretty simple to everybody, is continue to reach out to those people. I mean, there are there are teams out there, like I know, you know, I don't say any names, but I know there's a couple of teams out there that their their contact with their past clients and their future clients and SOI is phenomenal. I mean, it's amazing. I'm about to probably today, I'm actually hiring a company that does just that. It it touches my clients with either social media or emails or, or whatever it may be on a more regular basis because again, it's something I've never done. And you know, you know how this is anything we do better is gonna make us more money and create more business. And right now, I've not tried to make any changes in my business in probably five years. Hmm. And then the third one, um, gosh, you know, I hate to say this because uh, I, I, I jokingly pride myself on the fact that I've never needed an assistant, even with as busy as I've been at times, um, really getting an assistant, you know, and, and I don't mean an assistant that you take a listing and disappear and your assistant does everything. I mean an assistant that keeps you on your game whether it be your schedule, whether it's your, your follow-ups and your contacts. Um, it's always great with paperwork. I, you know, for whatever reason, my ADD manages to help me multitask well, where there's times when I'm going to the office and I'll remember to do like three or four things for like right now I've got seven in escrow. I'll remember to do three or four things 
that have to be done in those deals. And I think to myself that I'm, I'm amazed at my age. <laughs> I still remember that stuff, but I managed to stay on top of everything. I don't miss documents. I don't miss HOA orders. I don't miss things like that, but it would sure be nice to have somebody else who that was their focus and that was their job. I think so those top, those would be the top three things I would do. That, and, and then the only other, well, that would be the one thing I would change in my business, those three. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, you know, that's the number one thing I hear from people that are doing a lot of business too, is I would have started my CRM. And let's face it, Tom, you know, if you even got a part-time assistant, not to talk to your clients, not to do the things that you do well, but to set up the VAC 2.0 for you with the neighborhood reports and the newsletters, right? And remind, so if you just had somebody and someone to handle like you just said, you know, setting up their home inspections and all that kind of, I mean, you can go to them, but have somebody just quarterback. Could you imagine what that would free you up to do as far as transactionally? It'd be, it'd be great. Yeah, you know, and, and, and uh, that's the thing too, Rick. I think that a lot of people make this, they try and make it like this job is more difficult than what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a very, it can be a very difficult job if you don't do it properly. But if you do it properly, you do everything above board and you're, you're, you're on top of everything, this is not a job that requires 10 hours a day to sell a home. It's a job that requires doing the right thing for your clients, being available. And like I said before, being available to them. It's not, I don't, I don't want to say it's not rocket science because there's a lot that goes into real estate, managing the transaction and managing the contracts and, and the, the ups and downs that come with, with negotiating anything. But if an agent is in the office for seven, eight hours a day and they're only closing one deal a month, what, what I would say is they need to find a better way to use that seven or eight hours because they're not, they're not producing. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. They're not doing a high billable hour uh, activities to cause that to happen. And a lot right. of agents, they just don't know. And, and remember, you know, um, like you said, you went out door knocking, you went process. I mean, you filled your, you know, your repeat referral business quickly and then service them inc incredibly well. And now you do a bunch of business because of that and you stay on top. I can, remember, I can remember my first year being in the office till 11 o'clock at night, making my own flyers so I could drive them out to prompt the next morning. I mean, I, I, there were times I was, I was in the office sometimes, you know, eight, 10, 11 hours a day, but it's because I was still learning the job. I was still trying to make that, that production. I was still trying to make those contacts. But again, if, if you get through that first bit of learning phase and, and, and doing things correctly, you know, I, I joke all the time that this job is not rocket science. It isn't. It is. It's just funny because one of my people in my coaching used to work for aerospace. So he technically is a rocket scientist now in real estate. So I go, well, then you should be perfect because people say, no. all right. Any final thoughts you want to leave them with today, Tom? You know, the, the biggest thing I would tell you guys, just that when you get out there, like I, I kind of mentioned it before, but I think a lot of people let their ego get in the way. Um, you know, we're, we're, you all know the reputation that realtors have. And what I would say is that I think sometimes that ego, when your client calls up and goes, hey, is this wrong or did you mess this up? Trying to find an excuse for it instead of just going, wow, you know what? I did. I missed that. And just being honest. And so to me, I think the, the biggest attribute an agent can have with the perception people have of agents already is just be honest. Be 100% honest. Don't, 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 do what, don't, don't create the horror stories that we all hear about in real estate. Be that agent that people, even if you make a mistake, they know it was a mistake and not something that was maybe more nefarious. So right. that would be my best advice to people, is just you know, work hard, be honest, you know, learn everything you can, attend the sales meetings, listen to Rick Ruby, he's like a real estate god, anything he tells you to do, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, well thank you very much. Well, you know what, it's, uh, it's a pleasure working with all these incredible agents like yourself. You know, we have 3,600 between all three markets right now, it's an incredible job, I love my job, just like I know you love yours, you're incredibly good with people. And uh, that's one of the things that makes you uh, a top producer, my man. So listen, let's all get it done in 2021. <laughs> that was good, right, Thank you so much for having me, man. And, uh, my pleasure, man. Thanks for your time. I'll see you. Bye-bye. All right, buddy.